Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dima Ututu and I create content here on YouTube, mostly on finance and self-development for this channel. If that sounds interesting to you, do well to subscribe. And if this is your first time on my channel, a very big welcome to you. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the mistakes I made in 2022. Um, I usually do this self-appraisal and self-reflection towards the end of the year. I also try to do it in between the years, but the very huge part of it is towards the end of the year and I decided to share with you guys. And also, I came across a video um, by Ali Abdal. If you don't know him, he's very great on productivity tips and you know self-growth and all of that on YouTube as well. So he shared a video where he talked about the failures he had in 2022 and you know it was very interesting i'm like okay let me do this because it will also be the first time that i'm doing something like this on youtube where i share my failures and you know we are always used to seeing glamours and glitz online and you know successes and what people have been able to achieve and rarely do we see you know the errors and mistakes that people made so here is mine and i hope that it helps me and also anyone who might find it beneficial so i kind of wrote down some of the mistakes i made when i um did my self-reflection i captioned it how i failed in 2022 so the first one in no particular order is over committing um before 2022 started i struggled a lot in 2021 and in my head you know you know this thing where if you fail you kind of try to maybe be mean to yourself and try to tell yourself oh you have to do more because you were not able to achieve something like this so that was part of what happened to me when it when i entered 2022 so because i felt like i didn't do enough in 2021 i wrote these very huge goals and i overcommitted. oh i'm going to achieve this i'm going to achieve that it was very harmful to me and i didn't realize it until later into the year i think towards the end of this year i won't even lie like i overcommitted. i wrote a lot of goals like they seemed so amazing on the paper but then bringing it to life i didn't put into consideration a lot of things and i also didn't realize that life is not a sprint it's a marathon so that was one of the first mistakes i made in 2022 so i would also you know after doing the reflection i had to tell myself that do not overcommit because when you do over when you overcommit you also get overwhelmed and when you're unable to achieve those things it sort of throws you back and then you feel like you're not good enough so as much as possible in 2023 even though i've planned my goals and all of that i put into consideration not overcommitting because at the end of the day it's not about what is written down but it's actually about what you were able to achieve right then the second one very close to it was setting too many goals so guys um if you know me very well especially my very close friends they would know that i'm someone who always sets goals like i can't function if i don't have something that i'm working towards like i i must have a goal even you know when i wake up in the morning or a night before i always write down to do list these are the things i want to achieve these are the goals i want to take off today and all of that so um i would do a different video showing you guys you know how i plan for the year my month and you will see through the reflection of all the goals i wanted to achieve in one year guys the goals i wrote down i put in a lot of goals that were not very realistic so going forward i'm not going to do that anytime you're setting a goal the goal should always be smart and by smart it means it should be specific it should be measurable it should be achievable achievable that a in smart it should be realistic and it should be time bound i think so the goals that i set i did i went above and beyond to set goals that you know because i set those high goals yes i know that with setting those high goals it also made me achieve a lot of things but at the end it's also like going through the goals you could i could see that i wasn't able to achieve a lot of the goals because the things were so much i don't know if that makes sense so in the grand scheme if i had set realistic goals i would have checked off all my goals right all the realistic ones but because i did excess of it i was only able to check out 30 percent out of 100 but then when you look at the 30 percent it's very bulky but 
in the grand scheme, when you don't look at the goal you set for yourself, you could see that you actually failed. You did 30 out of 100, which is like F. So going forward, I'm not going to be setting goals that are not realistic. I'm not going to set too many goals because life, everything takes time. So you mustn't achieve everything in one sitting. And the third one was not taking my mental health seriously. Guys, um, 2021, that was when I understood what anxiety, depression, panic attack, all those things. That was when I kind of understood it a little bit, but I didn't know what I was going through, but I just had a little bit of an idea. First of all, it started as a burnout. That was in 2021. It started as a burnout and I didn't take it very seriously because I'm always this very goal setter. You have to do this. Anytime I have a free time and I'm not doing anything, I'm always like, oh, you're wasting your life. Oh, you're wilding away. And because of that, I kept on overworking myself without knowing that I'm overworking myself because I'm always working or doing something. And then that was how I carried it with all those burnouts, the anxiety and everything. I moved it to 2022. And then in 2022 was when you escalated like it escalated so much that i even had to like take one month of work not doing anything and in that one month it was still not even enough for me to recover right so what i'm trying to say is mental health comes before anything and everything else in this life i'm not even joking if this place is not in the right place I'm telling you nothing else would be so this year I really went through turmoil I really went through a lot when it comes to my mental health but luckily um, towards the end of the year I still learning and unlearning a lot of things I had to get into therapy I still learning that my mental health is way more important than anyone any job anything else at all so I definitely played with my mental health this year the fact that I'm alive and didn't do anything drastic to myself is all thanks to God so if you're the one if you're someone watching this I want to tell you that whatever it is you're going through whatever it is you think you're not achieving or you're trying to overwork yourself or you're trying to prove something make sure that your mental health comes first once your mental health is in check, every other thing flow, every other thing flows naturally. And I didn't understand it until it happened to me. And I'm still healing. I'm still not fully recovered. I'm still, you know, doing my therapy, meditation, exercise, and all of that. So if you're someone who still does not believe in mental health issues and all of that, I didn't I didn't know what it was. Well, until it happened to me. I had to understand so please if you're watching this do not joke with your mental health the next one where I failed again is not taking my physical health seriously so aside from mental health physical health is also very important so because I was dealing a lot mentally it's reflected on my physical self so I am someone who always believes in you know looking fit keeping fit but i struggled a lot this year when it comes to my physical health oh my god guys whenever i'm stressed or going through something i find comfort in food and i'm someone who enjoys food i'm someone who likes food so now when i'm not mentally okay the only thing that brings me peace that i thought was food guys i was eating uncontrollably anytime i start having panic attack or anxiety oh my goodness guys food was mostly my comfort like even when i'm not hungry i would just try to use food to pass time and it was not healthy like i tried to exercise but i know that i didn't take it seriously i only exercised like times when it was only very convenient for me or when i've looked at the mirror and i've gained a few pounds the love handles are showing properly i'm like oh let me do this 30 days challenge or 20 days challenge and after that i'll still go back like entering this year i think i was five five kg or six kg lighter than what i am now guys i gained a lot of weight this year and it's not something that um, i would advise anybody i know that i didn't take my physical health very seriously i wasn't able to you know be active like going my taking steps going to the gym or doing home workouts i wasn't eating right i was eating anything that came 
anything I saw, anything that was in sight. So um, going forward, I've also decided to take things like this extremely seriously. So I've gone back to the gym. <laughs> I've also, I've, I started it towards the end of this year so that it won't be that next year it will be something that I'm struggling to learn how to do again. So I started it so that once the, we enter the new year, it will already be a part of me. So I've come back to the gym. I've even bought, um, I want to meal prep. So um, if you watch my vlog channel, if you don't, I'm going to link it in the description. That's where I'm going to be documenting my lifestyle when it comes to my food, my workout. I'm starting a new series on that channel calling it intentional living where i document my weight the progress I'm showing people what i eat i'm going to start calorie deficit I, I tried calorie deficit beginning of this year no not beginning of this year i think around august or september and i was able to lose a few pounds and i don't just want to make it like a challenge maybe like 30 days it's going to be like a lifestyle for me okay so the next one that i also didn't do well this year was less communication with friends and family so um yeah, I do communicate with my family, I do communicate with my friends, but I feel like I didn't do so well this um, 2022 in the sense that because I was going through a lot, most times I wanted to be left alone and calling people was not... <laughs> Or checking up on people was not one of the things that was top priority on my list and the fact that life is too short and we think that we have all the time in the world is is not the case so i really wish that i put in more effort into my relationship with people you know my family my friends who are not living very close to me like people who are probably back home or in other countries i really wish i put in more effort i know that some people will be like oh but they didn't check up on you or all those things don't matter um it, it just i think it still depends on you and how you want your relationship with others to be just so that in case anything happens you won't be like oh i wish i did or oh i wish i didn't so i really wish that i going forward in 2023 i've already written down how i want to you know handle my relationship with my family and friends you know communication even though i'm not very close to even though i'm very far away from home i still want to be able to communicate with them as often as i can as much as i can to you know be closer to them make the relationship stronger and that's one thing i want to do better in 2023 and then the next one is less self-care the guys <laughs> You see this self-love, self-care thing? I didn't take it seriously at all. So when I wrote it, I was like, let's self, let self-care. I wrote working on vacation, no dating, no dating myself, not spending time, not spending on myself. Guys, <laughs> this year, most times when I took vacation, I was when I took some time off, maybe to travel with my friends or I was working and that is not good i i struck i didn't know how to turn it off like i'm someone who has been working for as long as i can remember and it has become so much part of me which is very i'll call it the hustle culture where you know you think actually someone coming from africa nigeria where one of the ways that they define you to be someone who is established or anything is that oh, you're always working like when you're not working is as if you're whiling away your life you don't know what you're doing with your life all those things so it really has become something that i now struggle with like not working so whenever i see myself enjoying just a little bit like not doing anything i get very scared that oh i'm wasting my life oh i'm whiling my life away whereas that's not supposed to be most times when i'm on vacation i'm working is it that i'm trying to create a youtube video if i'm not doing um, office work i'm trying to write on medium i'm trying to post on youtube all those things are work and i i struggled like this year i can't space it's just this christmas period that and i'm still shooting this is what december 28 or thereabouts and i'm creating this content but then um going forward um i've already also you know mapped out how i want to take my breaks when i take my breaks i'm not editing any video i'm not doing any office work 
I'm not doing anything. So before I go on those vacations, I'll create the videos, batch them, edit them, and schedule them to upload whenever I'm not around. So if I'm if I'm out of office because I see my YouTube channel as a business. I see my medium as a business. Anything that I post online, I see it as a business because it's a stream of income for me. So once it's work and business, I want to, when I say out of office, out of office should be out of office, both on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, wherever it is. I don't want to do that anymore. So if I want to go on break, I'm going on break everywhere. So I didn't date myself enough. So um, I know that a lot of people might not see it as a big deal, but it really is because some people also don't enjoy spending time alone and that is not very good. So if you're someone who struggles with taking, um, staying alone, try to date yourself. So dating myself more, like taking myself on dates, going for lunch, going to a museum, art painting, going on solo trips, um, self-care, like go and, you know, make my nails look beautiful, go for massage. I did less of that in 2022 and I don't want to do that in 2023. I failed myself in that aspect and I don't want to do it. So I'm trying to let you know if you're also someone who didn't date yourself well, I'm urging you to do that. And that thing I also, when it comes to self-care is spending on myself. I am one of the biggest strugglers of spending on myself. Guys, all my life, most times, most of the money that I've been able to make, most of it goes to people. Either I'm helping this person or I'm helping that person. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoy helping people. I think it's like one of the things that, like whenever I do that, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I have a purpose. I enjoy helping people. But the thing is like, the negative part of it is that, I struggle to spend on myself. Like, I struggle to bring out money and say, oh, Dima, you deserve this. I make money. I won't say maybe it's a lot or whatever because some people may be peanuts. But what I make should be okay for me. But guys, most times when I look around, I'm like, I don't really have anything that you can say, oh, this is something that you've really spent money on. I just have the basic. And most times I'm like, Whenever I want to bring out a huge amount of money to get myself maybe a very nice perfume, a very nice bag, I'm like, are you sure you deserve it? Are you sure you, it's not too expensive? But when it comes to someone else, guys, if it comes to someone else and I need to bring out 3,000, 4,000 euros, yes, it might, you know, hurt me for just that moment because it's a lot of money that I'm giving out, but I'm very okay with it. Like, I won't even think more than five minutes once i just do the analysis or oh, let's you have money left even if the money might not be big enough i can i'm very okay with doing that and making other people happy but putting myself last like i would make I'd, it was a struggle and i'm happy that i'm learning slowly to you know spend on myself get things nice things for myself so i really really feel terribly this year when it comes to spending on myself and i'm learning to understand that it is not a bad thing. I deserve good things too. I deserve to treat myself because I'm working. So the reward of me putting in all the labor, all the work is that I can get to spend on myself and enjoy the fruit of my labor. Then the next one is shiny object syndrome, <laughs> not taking action. Oh my God. Guys, I don't think I know anyone that plans, has great ideas, write them down like me. Oh my god, once I'm baiting, anyway, if I show you my phone, I, if I show you my phone in my notes, guys, I write down, <laughs> like, let me show you guys, like, I write down things, I write down ideas, and then if you open each of these, let's even, if you now go back to um, to-do list, daily to-do list, each week, each day of the week of this year, I wrote down things that I'm, well, you see, taking that action, <sighs> was something that I struggled with. Shiny syndromes, that's what they call it. Yeah, shiny object syndrome. I always have good ideas. I always think of very good things, but committing to it, like I always want to find the excuse. Oh, it might not be good enough. Oh, I'm not this, I'm not that. Oh, I'm not ready. Oh, I don't have this. In as much as I ever committed, I also had issues of putting action. Hmm. Guys, the imposter syndrome and the anxiety I experienced this year, that it didn't kill me. I know that some people might think I'm exaggerating and I just still couldn't explain to people. Guys, like in a day, I could be having like eight episodes of panic attack. Like it was very terrible. It was bad. At some point, 
let's leave that the next one is putting god last guys my relationship with god i'm a christian and ever since i've known me i've always loved god i've always loved worshiping him and praying to god i believe in god and most of my wins most of the things i've been able to achieve is because of him and i have this very strong and lovely relationship with him that every decision in my life i always discuss with him i you know whatever it is no matter how tiny it is i talk to god but this year was the least of them all i struggled to be in his presence i struggled to read my bible my relationship with him did not seem important like it was the least thing on my mind the only time i'll remember god is maybe when i'm experiencing serious anxiety or when something is something has gone terribly bad i'll not come so it was like at my own convenience that was when you know i was i would reach out to god and like oh i'm going through this i'm going through that i am not going to be doing that in 2023 so what i've started it as a habit every morning when i wake up is the first thing i do even if i don't remember whenever i remember it immediately i either go on my knees sit down wherever it is i am because god is everywhere wherever it is i am i'm praying if i'm going to the gym in the morning and maybe i woke up late without having time to pray on the train i say my prayers i read my bible i listen to you know gospel i sing along i worship there is no excuse that I have that even to give God five minutes. So that was something that I struggled with this year. I didn't prioritize God and it's also reflected in my life. So I'm going to make sure that I prioritize him enough in 2023. Then the next one is little development, little self-development. So I'm someone who believes in always learning and growing and being better guys this year i was doing the very basic like when i mean very basic is like do things to get things done even when it comes to like work you know like sitting and saying oh i want to learn this skill or oh i need to improve on this i was just everything i most of the things that i did this year was just the experience i've had previous years that i was able to push along like i didn't remember very very well sitting down to say oh i want to learn this and even if i did whenever i did i always wanted to rush it i always wanted it to oh, get it done and get out of the way and it was very bad so i wouldn't lie like normally i'm someone who reads a lot of books in a year i could read over 20 30 books this year i really struggled even though i have audio books like unlimited because i pay there's this app i use scribd i pay i'm going to link it in the description if you're someone who struggles with reading physical book scribd the app it helps you with audio books a lot of books that are in um, written form you also have the audio version so whenever i'm gymming or on the road i can be listening to the audio books i didn't do a lot of reading this year and it also should so whenever i'm not Whenever I struggle with self-development or not reading enough or not learning, getting to know enough, it affects my confidence. To be able to speak in public or give my opinion, I struggle. I start having this inferiority complex that I don't know so much or my confidence reduces. I don't know if any other person suffers from that, but it's something that I experience. You know how they say um, knowledge makes you confident? Yeah, that's also like so if i'm knowledgeable at something you will see how confident and bold i am and i talk about it but because i didn't do a lot of that whenever it came to even sometimes i walk i struggled like <laughs> guys i really struggled like sometimes i'm like did i supposed to know this but because you're not giving out time because you're not bringing out time to learn that is what is affecting your confidence you can't give a lot of opinion because you don't know so much so like that was one thing that I struggled with. I'm going to try to, you know, make out time to learn things, learn skills, develop myself, make myself better. So even in the Bible, Proverbs, it says that once you stop learning, even the previous things you know, you start forgetting them. And they also said that the day you stop learning is the day you start dying. And that quote is nothing far from the truth. Like, it is so true. So if you're someone who you're struggling to learn, try to create, even if it's 10, 20, 30 minutes a day, to learn something. If it's something that you've been struggling to learn, try and do that. The next one um, that I have is not being grateful. 
looking at things half empty, chasing the next high. I'm a very grateful person. But one thing that I noticed this year, and not just a very grateful person, I'm also someone who is extremely positive. But you see this year, this year is the my highest record. This year is the first time, not just, this year is the first time that I was way more on the negative side than on the positive side. So because I was dealing with a lot of anxiety, panic attack, guys, I started being very negative, very pessimistic. That most, most of the times it also affected the gratitude part of me. So I was always looking at things half empty. So whenever it came to something going wrong, instead of me to be grateful about what is right, what is going on well, what I currently have, I start thinking and start worrying about things that are out of my control, things that I have Things that I have no control over, instead of me to be grateful for the things that are going well, I start thinking of things that are not going well. I was extremely ungrateful this year. Like sometimes whenever I remember, I'm like, oh God, I'm really grateful for these things. But most of the time, I was on the negative part of things. I was very, I was ungrateful. I don't used to remember to be grateful and give gratitude for what is instead of what is not. So is. Is a, it was a very terrible experience, I won't lie. So nowadays, whenever that thought of thinking through the negative starts, there was this book that I read, is really, really nice. I would recommend it. Let me get the name. Um, I read it this, this towards the end of this year. The name is Winning the War in Your Mind. Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. It's, written by, it's a book written by Craig. Crucial. I hope I got his name right. This book is one of the best books I've read in my entire life because it was as if the man went through what I'm going through. I don't know. I don't know if that. I don't know if that made sense. But this book was as if my life was written in a book, and it reminded me of how grateful I should be. I don't know if you can see my bed, but if you look down there, guys, because of the battle I had this year. I had to start forcing myself to think positively before ask my friends like my friends know me as someone who is extremely positive like anytime they will tell you oh if you want a positive or if you want to look at something in a very good light or good way come and meet Dima if you look down there those are like some of the things that I wrote out like daily affirmation and declaration to remind myself to be grateful to not be scared to not let fear and anxiety rule me like it was a serious struggle like it was a very serious struggle this year sometimes we get carried away by what is not right what is not going well and forgetting that where you are currently, you once tallied, you once cried and prayed to God to be there. And then you're there and you're not recognizing the blessings around you. I am 1 million percent sure that I am not where I am yesterday, 10 days ago, last month, last two months, last year, not to talk of last two years or last three years. Like where I am today is so much better than whatever wherever i have been so sometimes we forget it's not like we intentionally do it but sometimes we left we let life carry us away we get carried away with life that we forget to be grateful for the tiniest things that god has blessed us with i know that is it's not something easy because if someone ever told me last two years or last three years that I would ever be a negative or person i would look at you and laugh i'm like you don't understand what you don't know what you're talking about I, my name, like I always see myself as a synonym for positivity, chasing the next high. Like once I achieve something or once I get something done, I get, <laughs> I don't even remember to appreciate or be grateful that I have done that. The next thing I'm thinking of, oh, what's the next stage after this stage? I don't calm down to breathe and say, oh, you've been able to do this for yourself. Oh, this thing that was giving you sleepless night, sleepless night, you've been able to achieve it. I was chasing the next high, like, oh, we've done this, oh, it's gone. And then not being, immediately that feeling of, oh, I want more, oh, I haven't been able to, I've not done enough, I need to go out and get some more. I struggle with that. I was always chasing the next high. Oh, this goal has been achieved, next one, next one, next one. Like not sitting down to reflect on what you've been able to achieve, on what you've just, you know, gotten out of the way. And that's actually what makes us very unhappy. We might think that is not it, but like, 
imagine you just sit down, close your eyes and think of where you, you were last year, last two years and think of where you are now and you could see the growth, you could see the changes, no matter how little, even as much as being alive or as much as not losing a loved one, or as much as having a roof over your head, not having to beg for food, not have, having to ask anybody for anything that you cannot afford yourself. So like, that was something that I really struggled with. I was always chasing the next high. Oh, what's next? Oh, what's next? Oh, what's next? Goals after goals after goals after goals and trying to, you know, so, I, I really had I really had a lot to learn I know I really have a lot to learn like this next one the little me looks at me now to be like Dima how did you get to this point which is not believing in myself guys till tomorrow the best asset I ever had and which I'm trying to rebuild again is believing in myself like anytime my friends or my siblings or anybody tells me Oh, this is what I want to do. My first answer is, you can do it. Oh, you can do it. Like, I believe so much in people. I believe so much in myself. Like, I believe that I can do this. Like, once I just think of something, the old me will be like, ah, it's nothing, you can do it. And strangely, I do it. Strangely, I do it. But this year, uh, the amount of self-belief. <laughs> oh my God. The amount of... Um, sorry, yeah, the amount of um, self-doubt, rather, I had this year, you can build a house with it. Oh my god. Any small thing in my head, I'm like, oh, it will not work out. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, I can't do it. I did not believe in myself. And the truth is, the best thing you can do is to bet on yourself and believe you can do it. And if you don't believe you can do it, you can't do it. That's just the truth. If you don't believe you can do it, all the obstacles, all the challenges you see will become way bigger than they are supposed to be. But when you believe in yourself, when you see the obstacles, they are sort of like a high, like a ginger. Oh, this thing is trying to block me. You knock it out of the way. This year, oh my God, the self-doubt was on a high, guys. I doubted myself extremely this year and I am not going to do that ever again. I'm never going to underestimate me. I'm never going to doubt myself. Even if it's not achievable now, it is going to be achievable. By the time I keep, if it's a mountain, by the time you keep digging and digging, yes, it's not going to take one day. It's not going to take one year. But if I put my mind to something and I think it's possible, is going to be possible it's just for me to find ways it might not be easy but i'm going to be able to do it i'm going to believe in myself more i'm going to even if it means standing in the mirror every day and keep reciting i can do it i can do all things and that's also one thing that there's this book i'm currently reading i've read it before but because i was struggling so much with negativity that i had to go back to the book and it's called the power of positive thinking that's currently what i'm reading now on that app script app you can use my um link if you use my link you're going to have your one month free and i also get to have one month free so this is just the app so you can see i can just listen and keep reading so this one now you still you can see continue reading the power of positive thinking okay, not to become tired is to lose yourself in something in which you have a profound conviction so the power of positive thinking one of the rules or one of the things that he kept on repeating is keep reciting to yourself every morning or whenever you want to do something just keep saying i can do all things through christ i can do all things through christ i can do all things through christ and that's one thing that has been helping me sometimes when i wake up in the morning i don't want to go to the gym i'm like i can do all things through christ i can do all things through christ and then i start seeing all those maybe oh it's going to be very far for me to walk from here to the train station all of a sudden it's not looking far again once i get dressed and out of the way and the funny thing is like when you not get to the gym you're so grateful I'm like oh i'm grateful i'm happy that i came to the gym so that's one thing like believing in myself i'm going to do better 2023 and then the last but not the least is letting fear rule me ah yeah 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 god <laughs> guys the fear <laughs> oh my god like i will just stay and start trembling like i'm scared even when i want to join maybe 
um, again, they give me a task at work. In my head, I'm already scared that oh, it's going to be extremely difficult. I'm not going to be able to do it. And then I let that fear. And then the tax, instead of me going to tackle the tax, I'm just looking at the tax. The tax is looking at me. I'm looking at it. The tax is looking at me. So something that is probably maybe supposed to take like two hours may not take you like a day or two because I'm scared of even, I'm so scared of even picking up the ticket and working on it. <sighs> fear. Oh God, fear has killed a lot of dreams. Fear has killed a lot of people who are still alive, but they are dead because of fear. Fear is something that takes away what is supposed to make you. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> well, oh my God. Oh my God, this year I was so scared. I was afraid of everything. I let fear rule me. Ah. Uh, I let fear rule 2022 for me and I'm not going to let that happen in 2023. These days, like what I do most times when I get scared, like maybe when I think of something that I want to achieve or and I get scared, what I start doing is start writing down. Maybe in my my notes is something that I don't joke with, the notes on my phone. And then I'm someone who also writes a lot on books. So what I do is I start writing down what is that thing I'm afraid of? What can I do? to make the fear stop do i need to take action is it something that is out of my control if it's something that is out of your control stop being scared do the things that are within your control right so if you're scared of picking up these tax oh yeah open the ticket break it down what are the things that you're supposed to be able to do for you to be able to achieve this tax who do you need to go to to help you resolve some things that you don't understand? Do you need to have a one-on-one -on -one with your colleague? Do you need to go online and research something? Break it. By the time you break it down and start doing it one after the other, you see that there was really no need to be scared in the first place. So I used to know all these things, but then life, life, life happened. Like, guys, life happened to me in this 2022. <laughs> like, I'm extremely grateful that towards the end of the year something started making sense i slowly started getting myself back and i'm really really grateful for that i know this video is getting very lengthy but i'm just writing it i'm just you know saying things here to document it because i feel like i might still come back to watch this video myself so if you're someone who struggled a lot this year i just want to let you know that you were not alone you were not alone and one thing that there was this TikTok video that I watched where the person said that life is not all about happiness. Life is to, life is life. Like life is to be lived. You're going to face a lot of challenges. You're not going to be happy to for seven. No. And that's not a bad thing. Like if you're struggling, that period is the period you're supposed to struggle. Try to find a way to get out of that struggle. But if you're looking for a perfect place, a perfect world where you don't ever have to experience struggle, then you're not living. So struggles, challenges are part of life. So life, someone will tell you that it's like his experience. So experience life. Go through the sad moments. Go through the happy moments. Go through the trials, the tribulations. And then you see that you actually even have enough stories to tell <laughs> when you go through a lot of things. But 2023, God, I'm signing up for softness. I'm, I'm not going to deal with what I dealt with in 20, 2021 and 2022. I'm declaring and decreeing that 2023 is going to be great for me, my family, my loved ones, and you who is watching. I want us to go into this year with all positivity, whatever it is. Whatever it is you're working towards, don't let the struggles... Don't let the hoarders stop you. 2023, I want to do things differently. That's my mantra for 2023. Before, it was believing in myself. But I changed it to do things differently. So doing things differently is me believing in myself is part of doing something differently than I did in 2022 where I didn't believe in myself. So yeah, this video... <laughs> This video is long but i just hope that i was able to share my struggles and failures with you guys and hoping that i probably do a one-year reflection and see the difference between this year and this 2022 and 2023 and i'm hoping that 
I'm believing that it's going to be a great year 2023 so thank you so much if you got to the last part of this video let me know by leaving a heart emoji and saying um, my 2023 will be great and yeah thank you so much if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to my channel and like this video if you enjoyed it share it if you think it's valuable to anyone around you and i'll see you in my next video bye guys